Yeah, that's right. We're going to be talking about layering today. Well, it's just glazing in watercolor. Glazing, layering, you know. You like layering? Okay. Complex personality. Lots of different levels to you. Okay. I get it. Although I can really only see one layer. All right. All right. Cheap shot. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, everybody. Glad you minders could join me and my multi-layered friend here. Now I'm going to work on a piece today that if you've been around my channel for a long time, uh, it may uh, be familiar. It's a piece I started a while ago, and I actually kind of backburnered it. Done a couple videos on it. Uh, my intention was always to make a workshop out of it. Skillshare workshops are just kind of also on back burner right now. So I just want to go ahead and finish this up. And I wanted to revisit the glazing topic or the layering topic. And I want to give you five pointers. Five of, of my best tips for glazing. There's probably several hours yet to go into this piece. So we won't finish it today. But hopefully I'll have some tips you can use. So let's get to it. All right, here's the piece I was talking about. It's a little further along than the last video. If you want to see the last video I did about this, which also was talking about glazing, I'll put a link to it below. But I've been continuing to work on the leaves. And uh, as I said, I, I had intended to make a Skillshare workshop on glazing. My whole Skillshare thing right now is on hold. Uh, it will be coming back. I will be doing workshops for it, but I just wanted to go ahead and finish this up. It's just been sitting around too long, okay? These kind of pieces are difficult for my YouTube channel because they take hours. So I can't do something like this every week. I know I've gotten requests to do things that are a little more detailed, that take longer. But that's just not practical on YouTube. Uh, but I did want to do that every now and then. And my intention was to do pieces like this on Skillshare, break it down and take you through it in the lesson that took it step by step. And that's still my plan. All right, so let's look at this today. And one of the things I wanted to talk about before I even get into this is luminosity. Now, I don't really like to do this, but uh, occasionally I hear things from other YouTubers, other artists uh, that are telling people things that I do not agree with. Now, I have no intention on calling artists out. And you probably have heard my rants before. So when I call out somebody or when I correct something I don't agree with, it's for the intention of teaching you. Now what this artist said was that you can't really get proper luminosity through layering or glazing. Basically, uh, this artist's style was to put everything down in as close to single layers as possible. That was this artist's style. This artist is accomplished. I have no problem with their work. I think they do beautiful work, but this is a preference. This is not a fact, and uh, you only have to look as far as artists like Paul McCormack, Anna Mason, Susan Harrison Tustin, Linda Stevens Moyer, who actually wrote a book on lighting up your watercolors layer by layer. Soon E. Warren. And the list goes on. And those artists that I named, and you see brief examples of their work, luminosity is center stage. And if you layer and glaze correctly, you will get all kinds of luminosity. And that's all I wanted to say. If you happen to know the artists I'm talking about, please don't put their name. I'm not trying to call them out. If I see anybody doing that, I will delete it. Glazing is actually a prime way of getting luminosity on watercolor. You have to do it right. I have no argument that there is not a lot of luminosity in single layer applications, but there is just a lot that you cannot do in single layer applications. And that's a style thing. That's a preference thing. If a watercolorist can paint put down beautiful layers in a single application or close to a single application and that's what they love to do and that's the style they've developed more power to them i hope they do it and i hope they do a beautiful job and i will sit back and i will admire their work but it is that it's a preference all right enough of that we're going to start working on this piece and talk about my tips all right so tip number one when you glaze or when you layer have a clear layering strategy In other words, uh, don't just start painting and say, oh, layer here, layer there, layer here. 
a lot of times what you're doing is you're visually mixing you're visually mixing colors so you may put down a yellow and then a more bluish green and then a a more gray green and those layers will mix to visually uh, create different colors and values have a strategy know what colors you're going to do first uh, and this is actually something that I struggle with because I when I glaze and layer I just like to get into it and just start doing it and adjust as I go now there is a lot of adjustment possibility to doing layers but in general you should plan what you're going to do uh, it's it's a great idea to do your lightest colors first when possible that's not to say you can't come back over a darker area with a light colored glaze for adjustment you can the lighter colors going down first are less likely to be disturbed darker colors tend to be heavier layers and so when you come on top of them with another layer you're more likely to disturb that paint and lift it up now you can see parts of this that have been worked with layers these leaves here and parts that have not these are the initial layers there's probably only one or two uh, maybe two or three on these leaves. There may be half a dozen or more by the time I'm done with them. But when I'm planning my layer strategy, that's the first thing is deciding what washes go down first. And there's no rule I can give you for that. Just have a plan that takes you from lights to darks. Um, from the highlight colors, and don't forget there are colors in highlights. Highlights are not just lighter versions of the same color. You'll see variegations in yellows. And in this case, uh, these are ornamental plum leaves there are actually uh, violets in the leaf as well as greens very gray greens and very yellow greens so you'll see those variegations so plan how you're going to do that and some of these uh, i kind of wish i had done some yellow layers first i did a little bit were i to do it again i'd go back probably with some lighter yellow layers today i'm using my mission gold palette i don't use this very often nothing wrong with it love it it's just a monstrous palette I'm going to use it today because of all the vibrant reds that it has. In this video today, we're going to work on the leaves in this area here. My primary purpose is to go through these tips with you. On this piece, I didn't use any one piece of reference. I used parts and pieces of three. I sort of redrew it to my liking, in case you haven't seen the other videos on this. So I have a light direction that's mostly overhead, some from the side. I think what I'm going to do is uh, yellow up some of this part of the leaf. And again, this, this goes to adding a light glaze over a darker color. The ideal thing here would have been to do this first, but you can do this. And I do it all the time. And there's not a lot of dark color here yet so I'm, I'm okay you know I get into glazing over this I got to be really careful now tip number two is wet over dry what I just put down there was a, a single wet wash over a bone dry surface that's glazing now after you add that layer this section may be wet so you can charge in a little bit which is just a wet in wet technique where you're just adding little charges and they they will softly spread through that wash that you just added that's totally fine but just keep in mind that glazing and layering is wet over dry a very dry surface part of that same tip is that glazing is not necessarily covering everything or covering a whole leaf or piece of the subject every time as you saw i only glazed right there so uh, glazing in parts and pieces totally fine in fact that's what makes glazing so powerful glazing and layering just gives you so much control in the way you model the light now I'm adding a dark value to the tip of this leaf and then I'm uh, softening out the edge blending it out I could have wet that whole area and then just charged it in that's another possibility but I prefer just to do it uh, over dry and then blend out the top edge. It's going to come under this part that's curling up with some darker pigment. This is like a curling part of the leaf where the edge is curling up here. So 
So I'm going to darken that edge. Now this brings me to my third tip. Glazes are thin and transparent. I use almost completely transparent pigments and you just need to know your pigments. Know the maker, check their, their color charts to see what's rated. Very transparent or semi-transparent, but I try to go transparent as much as possible. And part of that tip is Glazes are added lightly, very lightly. You don't want to overbrush. Overbrushing is a big problem. A lot of times a piece that's overbrushed will have sort of a speckly spotted kind of a look. So use a light touch. I like soft brushes. This is an actual Kalinsky Sable, one of my favorites. This is a Nascota Reserva. But you can use a soft brush like a uh, black velvet, silver brush black velvet. So very thin very transparent layers. Now I feel like I need to go work on this leaf back here, this back one that's... this is very grayed because there is a lot of uh, red in some of these leaves so it kind of tends to gray out. So I started off with a grayish wash but I need to darken this so I see how uh, that's going to affect how this leaf will look. If your wash is too wet uh, it's going to push water out to th and pigment out to the edge and you'll get a hard edge. So the trick to doing really good glazing and layering in watercolor is a clean, nice clean, and as I already mentioned, thin and transparent wash. Try not to leave lines. Okay, that's better. I'm going to need to darken it even more. I had a curl up here that will need to get darkened. And this needs to darken as it dips in here. Sometimes you'll get a line where transparent colors overlap so beware of that. And if it, it happens to everybody and if it happens and that line just seems to get darker and it's starting to look like an outline um, just try to avoid it, paint up to it to balance it out or later uh, after you get this to the value that you want you can uh, lift on that line a little bit, but you have to be careful. Let me just reiterate, um, and this is not one of my five tips, but uh, it is a great tip for uh, watercolor in general and glazing, and that's uh, excess water is not your friend. Be careful with your water. Excessive water can really ruin a glaze. Now this is where I was talking about, I was getting a little bit of a line so as I paint the next darker glaze there, I'm painting up to that edge but not over that little overlap line to kind of keep my edge clean. And now you can see what this value, and I may take that down even more in the corners, is doing to this leaf. This is what's so fun and satisfying to me about glazing. these finite adjustments that uh, can just really make a piece shine. Some places your glaze can almost be dry brush. Just very little moisture, very little pigment, and it's almost like shading with a pencil. Get a lot of subtlety that way. This is such a gray leaf here. I think I'm just gonna add a little a light wash. This is one of those cases where now I can see going back I need a lighter glaze just sort of to bring out some green at least in some areas. You know in watercolor water management is always an issue that you need to to keep up with especially with glazing because you have these little spots that now that I glazed here that's wet and I got to be careful when I go back into it with more water that I don't create a bank a back run. But adding a little pigment is fine. I got to get a little bit of a soft charging in. This glaze here is pretty dark, and I take a risk glazing here. But it was just too yellow green. I wanted to add a bluish glaze over that, so I don't I, I brush gingerly and lightly. I don't want to loosen up that underlying layer, but I want to add a bluish tint. 
I'm going to continue glazing on this leaf here to turn that under. I'm trying to decide what to do with this leaf here. That's all too bright. Do I want it to curl that way and this edge be light or do I want it to curl this way and have it sort of cup into a shadow? I think probably I'll just shade it down into here. And here's where you have to be careful with overlap for creating another hard edge. So I'm going to shade that up as if that part's curling up and then blend it out. This is hot press by the way. Stonehenge Aqua. Love their hot press. When Stonehenge Aqua first came out I was just absolutely in love with it. And it's still a great paper to use. Just very happy with uh, the performance of it except for one thing. Masking fluid tears it. So that's been a disappointment. But Considering I only use masking fluid on about 20 to 30 percent of my pieces, that's not a big deal. All right, so I'm getting some nice, subtle, almost airbrushy gradation up there. And it can probably be darker as it gets down into this little V. And sometimes these glazes are just whispers of color. Now, one thing that's of, of note and you need to be careful about when you're glazing is your color choices. Um, if you want a color to stay vibrant and very saturated, you need to stay with that color, stay very analogous. Together on the color wheel. The further apart you get from one color on the color wheel, the more you're going to dull that color out. Now, if you're trying to, luminous neutrals are fine. Uh, they're beautiful, if that's your intention. But like in the case of these petals, uh, where I need maximum intensity, I stay very analogous in the colors. I don't move very far away on the color wheel at all. Another tip, which again is not one of my main f uh, five points, but you need to be able to do this blending and, color and water management practically in your sleep. You need to be very practiced at blending uh, with different amounts of water and know exactly what that's going to do. And when you do these glazes, keep, uh, again, I'm, I'm saying the same thing in different ways, but keep careful track of what's wet and what's not. Um, because you may forget that you wet one area, and then you go to add a darker color adjacent to it, and it bleeds into it. You can get to doing all these little glazes uh, so quickly that you forget, and I have done it many times. So I speak from failed or error experience. There is an error in watercolor to be made, I have made it. And more than once, well, let me tell you. When I mentioned keeping uh, colors intense as you work into the shadows and as you add glazes, to do that you stay analogous. This is what I'm talking about. These are all analogous colors. <clears throat> reds going down into cool reds and over into purples. So I want to add, this is another case of adding a light glaze over some already deeper colors but I just want to redden everything up a little bit and again I'm staying uh, keeping my brush strokes very light I have a very soft brush and now I can actually charge in because that's wet now I'm gonna start uh, hinting at some veins with some of these have some really neat color variegation uh, between sort of violets gray greens and yellow greens. Usually what I try to do is, is put in some hint of a vein first and then I add some of the shading because they you know the veins will the leaf will curve into the veins sometimes a lot of times actually and also remember that veins follow the contour of the leaves they're not just flat. It's a great way to tell the viewers eye which way that leaf is curving. Just be real subtle with the veins. Don't overdo it. In a lot of cases where the light hits uh, they will disappear. Alright for the purposes of this video we're getting uh, close to stopping. 
Uh, my final point, and I've already alluded to this, is make sure you do this in manageable chunks. You don't have to do big areas of glazing. Use a, if you do larger areas, make sure you have a brush that's large enough to handle it with a good enough point uh, to make the control also manageable. A lot of it depends on the subject, I realize, but uh, this kind of a subject, for instance, it's easy to do uh, manageable chunks. Don't be afraid of glazing and layering to achieve maximum luminosity. It just, you can't. I mean, you just really can't. Go check out some of those artists that I mentioned. And just marvel over their work. Every one of them uses layering techniques. And their work just glows. Thanks, everybody. I hope that gave you some great techniques to try as you learn to layer and glaze. Give it a try. See what you think. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support. It means so much, very important, and we will see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.